Hey, how's it going today? Gonna give you a review of the Vizio soundbar 2.1 channel soundbar with a subwoofer that we picked up recently. Doing the video because YouTube videos, every time I search for them, just seems like they're so long, so let's get down to business. This is a review of the Vizio SB3621N-E8 soundbar. Our first soundbar that we've purchased, we have a 7.2 channel home theater system in our main room, but this is for the kids playroom they're coming up with a kid cave so nice little package comes with the soundbar the subwoofer and a remote and the nice thing is it comes with a variety of different cables to suit whatever your hookup is on your TV so let's look at that TVs off the wall we're gonna look behind here we can see a variety of connections on the side our audio ones we have a three and a half millimeter audio line out jack as well as an SPDIF, which is an optical audio out port. That is going to pr produce the highest quality of sound for this system, so we will plan on using the optical audio cable, which is conveniently included with the soundbar. Open up the box, pull off the piece of foam, Pull out the soundbar accessory box. This will have all of your cables as well as the remote and the user manual. Pull this out. And the subwoofer is in there. The subwoofer is the larger box and the soundbar of course is the longer, less tall device. The back of the soundbar is where you will find your audio and power connections. The back of the subwoofer also has a spot for the power connection as well as an on off and a pairing mode button. Fortunately Vizio pairs the subwoofer to the soundbar at the factory so that should be all set inside the accessories box. We have two power cables, one for the soundbar. One for the subwoofer. We have multiple audio connectors. This is your three and a half millimeter audio connector. I do have this on my TV. However, this is an analog connection and will not produce as clear and crisp a sound as the optical audio cable, which is here. This will give us the best. There's also included a digital audio cable, which my TV does not support, and a 3.5mm line out to a left and right channel audio connection for TVs that would have this type of connection. Remote control with batteries, triple A's. You can see on the optical audio cable a slight uh, elevation there. It's like a groove. You can see on the optical audio end that there is a little bit of a groove toward the top and bottom. So just align those and your optical audio cable will plug in to the back of the TV. Clicks into place. We will make the same connection on the soundbar. Digital connections for audio in are on the same side of the soundbar, the optical. Again, I've plugged the other end of my optical cable into that jack. The digital would be a coaxial connection, conveniently marked as orange, which will match the orange cable in the accessory box. On the other end of the soundbar, you will find the auxiliary power in and the analog connections, as well as a USB port. Power cable, same for both the soundbar and subwoofer, so just line that up and plug that in. Once you plug in the subwoofer and the soundbar and have all of your connections, the soundbar for me powered on automatically once I plugged it into the wall. Indicated by the little LED light in the lower left hand corner of the soundbar. If not, on the remote control, you've got your power button here. There's also some buttons on the top of the soundbar. Power the here. Of Turning on the TV, the soundbar automatically detected the source of the audio as the optical out. 
and set that appropriately. So we're already getting sound out of the system. Use the remote to increase the volume if you want. We'll make sure you go free. Sounds really good. TV is putting sound out through the TV speakers also. This may be a setting that you want to disable. Most TVs will have that option available. Mine is a Roku TV. Just go into settings, scroll down to audio. And over here, TV speakers currently are enabled. Just hit that, disable the TV speakers. Now sound will only be output through the sound bar, which of course is going to give us the best audio experience. orbit. You have controls. That's Jeddah. Or what's left of it. The movie sounded great with the soundbar. I mean, I've got the 7.2 channel system in the other room, which of course is amazing. But for the price that I paid for this Vizio at $120 on sale at Costco, you can't really beat the sound. Sitting in the chair in the back of the room, it sounded like you were fully enveloped in surround sound. The bass was great. I had the volume cranked pretty high. It did not sound distorted at all. It's got to be one of the best sound bars that you can buy. Now we've done the movies, I'll show you quickly how to pair it with a Bluetooth device so you can easily stream music from your iPad or your other phone, tablet, whatever. To pair your Bluetooth device with a sound bar, on the top of the sound bar is a little Bluetooth icon. Press and hold that for about five seconds. See the light start to blink. It is now in pairing mode. I'm gonna go into my device, go into the Bluetooth settings. Click on Bluetooth. There's the device here that's starting to show up. Vizio SB3621N, click on that and it's connected. Pull up some music to stream. Boom.